just not eating. Listen. Listen carefully. I don't have much time. There's a black briefcase. You must open it. You want to find Diane's killer. Mm. No! Jay! There we go. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, oh, it's not in. Uh, okay, everyone, welcome to 30, episode 35 Behind the Masterminds. Today we have our special guest all the way from Barcelona. Yeah, we love Barcelona. Yeah. Uh, we're Danny and Vito, and I'm from... Patrones y Escondites. How's he Spanish? How's my Spanish? <laughs> pretty good. It's pretty good. Pretty good? Really? Yeah, pretty, pretty good. Really? That would have been like... It, 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 it means patterns and hideouts. Ah. Yeah, we did some research. We were like, yes, we got to know what we're talking about when we're talking Spanish. Yes, so. it does not mean pants. <laughs> <That's>... <laughs> no names. Pa pants, pantalo. <laughs> Don't get her started on her Spanish. It's... Okay. Yeah. All right. So before we introduce them, let's announce the raffle winners for episode 33 of our show with Crypto Grand Puzzle Pose. Yeah. Um, oh, and if anyone would try, like to try one of their games, 10% um, yeah. off it still works until February 12th. Yeah. So that's the code. That ETR you 10 for 10% off. Yeah. And um, we received a lot of entries for this one because the winner is going to receive a mystery goodie bag. No, no. It turned yeah. into a box. He, was it a box? He, no, no, he, he showed us what it yeah, is. Yeah, but he was but like, was you know like, what? This deserves more. Let's yeah. put it into a box. And well, he gave a quick um in our in our show in yeah. our episode with him. He gave a quick glimpse of what you can so expect. It, I mean, you can kind of check that out, but um there is a hand drawn ETR card in there. Yes. So we're gonna stalk the winner. Whoever gets it, <laughs> please post it on IG and tag us because so we, we want to see you with the, yeah. <laughs> okay. And then we can all try right. to find Did you. Do you want to do the drawing this time? No, 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 no. It's Are all up sure? to you. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I want to do the drawing like, for what they for I'm their pretty, prize. I'm pretty <laughs> lucky with the repetitive names these days. Like, I'm always getting the same I don't know. Words. Whoever is watching us right now, type your name if you think you're going to be the winner. Because, <laughs> you know, it might help get that extra, you know. All right. All right. Here we go. Okay. Ooh, it's, it's Helen Finley. Helen Bailey. Congratulations. Uh, yeah. That's a... That's a really nice mystery game. Yeah, okay. Now we know what to stop. Yeah. <laughs> well, here we go. All right, so. Um, so, um, okay, let's see. Uh, am I doing the intro today? You do the intro. I will uh, let our, our viewers know who our, our guests are for today. All right, so the uh, guest, like we said, is our from our favorite traveling destination, Barcelona. Yeah, we love so it there. Awesome. We visited twice together and once separately. Yeah. So it's three. Three, four, three, but we have to go back one day. Yeah. Because we love the tapas and how we can just sit around like the middle of the streets and eat forever. Yeah. I think <laughs> we 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 uh we went to go visit every Gaudi um ex uh, experience or exhibit that we could. Everything we, we can from Yeah. Barcelona. It was just it amazing. Yeah. Um all right, so here all we right, go. sorry, we're, we're we're getting taken away with Barcelona. But more importantly, we have Danny and Beto. Beto, Beatrice, Beto. Beatriz, Beto, whatever you want. Beatriz, <laughs> Beto, okay. Uh, both of them left their career to start this app game making journey because they felt the need to create artistically unique projects that have a story to tell and broaden the view of what games could be. Their goal is to deliver deeply satisfying experiences by blending gameplay, narration, and outstanding aesthetics. Danny writes the story and the puzzles, and Beto makes it happen. <laughs> but it's not just the two of them. They have a team of collaborators for programming, design, and music, and Unmemory is their first game. Yeah. So let's get started with our questions. Number one, uh, what does it mean? Like, what do you mean when you said Beto makes it happen? Like, does she have a magic wand and it's like poof, have a cadaver, done? No. Like, you know, is she the programmer or like, what's what's your position? Okay, um, as I said, I do everything that it has to be done. Uh, Danny writes the story, I make the puzzles, and I, you know, I make all these schemes in order to produce the game. We have a developer behind, we have a, a art design as well, and what I do is like to coordinate all these people in order to have what we like, mm -hmm. the game. But there is a um, financial as well. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. That, that you need to produce the game and I take care of it as well. So Danny took away all the fun and then you're just doing <laughs> boring stuff. But then it's not, it's definitely necessary. <laughs> or else it's not My first job is to 
stop then you know wasting money. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it's like that's no, a, that's, there's a budget. You can't cross over that, or else we're not. Very important job. Yeah. I, I I see it this way. It's like I I think um, yeah maybe it, 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 it might it might sound like I'm the one who has the ideas, but um, I think ideas are something like a commodity. I mean, everyone has ideas. The, the, the difficult thing is to bring those ideas like to life. I mean, to make them happen. And um, that's why I need a partner like Beto. I mean, she makes them happen. I, I just can tell, we could do this and this and this. And just, she's the one to say, no. I mean, focus, Danny, please focus. We'll do this <laughs> and this. And first we'll do this. And then we are prioritized. And that's the way it's good. I mean, ideas get done. So um, it's, it's a lot of value partner. put in there. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, sounds like she's the one who Excel sheet keeps the whole machine yeah. producing. <laughs> uh, so and, and, and the one who plays the music loud, too. <laughs> <laughs> That's to keep you awake. Like, yeah. Make sure. <laughs> True. <laughs> so how did the idea of Amari came about? Was there an inspiration from somewhere, like a movie, a book? Well, it was... Um, it was several things. I mean, uh, on one side, we we like to read a lot, and I don't know. Sometimes we were talking just like how the the reading experience hasn't evolved that much since the since Gutenberg. I mean, since uh, we got press books. Now, of course, we have digital books now, ebooks. But uh, I mean, the reading experience doesn't change that much. Of course, you can highlight some text and look for words in the dictionary, but it's it's not that much. And uh, on the other side, we had like uh, uh, like these games we like, like um, game books, like Choose Your Own Adventure, and we were thinking that okay, they give you choice, but um, uh, you could also improve that. So trying to mix those those two ideas, we came with the the idea of making a memory, a, a book you can play or a game you can read. I mean, it's it's both. I mean, it depends on on how you how you approach it. Uh, and when we decide to write it, we, we were thinking on what kind of story could fit in, in, in this kind of uh, format. Yeah. And we're fans of David Lynch and Christopher Nolan, and we, we kind of got inspired by films like Memento or Mulholland Drive. And uh, that's how we kind of how we kind of like put all those pieces together uh, to make to make to make the story happen. Yeah, I mean, you're a big it, fan of Momentum. I'm a huge fan of Momentum, also Christopher Nolan, um, and then also mm -hmm. David Lynch. So, and I definitely got that vibe playing because, um, well, I'm gonna go into my experience uh, on what on my take of what the game was um, in a few, but I definitely got those vibes. Um, mm -hmm. So, how did the idea of um, like we're very curious, like what were your previous jobs? Did you bring any of your outside skills into making this uh, game happen? Pedro? Yes, of course. <laughs> okay, this is our first game. We have done this before, but uh, we, we work in, the, in digital for a long time. Danny had an agency, mm -hmm. and it was uh, on the financial part of it, <laughs> of that, uh, that uh, enterprise, with our agency. And of, of course, that, that helped us a lot because um, we have a plan because we, we know how to do it. Um, the, only, the only thing that we didn't know how to do is like um, the program, <laughs> the programmation. <laughs> so for the reason we have to hire, we are just two and what we do is like to hire people and help us to, to make, you know, this happen. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But um, yeah, of course it, uh, it helps a lot. Danny and me, we are being, launching all projects in different kind of, not, not games. <laughs> We have done for other things, not for us. I, I think one, one, one thing you can, you can get from, from, from my memory is that um, it is, it is a, um, a crafted product. It is, I mean, uh, we've, been, we've been paying a lot of uh, attention to details and aesthetics. And I think that also comes from our advertising background. I mean, you know, like uh, whenever you work on advertising, I mean, it's it's the packaging. I mean, you have to advertise the product and, and, and you focus on doing like the best packaging. So it looks like amazing. So it, it was not, not only to have like a good story and good puzzles, but also like to uh, also have like high end, um, high end design, like have a, a, well, as I just said, uh, pay attention to all details and have a, a product that uh, looks very crafty. You know? yeah. Your press kit is like the most impressive press kit I've ever seen. 
seen. Yeah. You have so many different pictures for various social media backgrounds, and then you have trailer. <laughs> I didn't know which one to pick because no, there were so many. Yeah, you definitely <laughs> had everything. Actually, more than I could expect it when I was creating our uh, our review because you had. Like yeah. different variations of all the posters and, and like the, the video quality is amazing. Different uh, the twenty second, forty second, one mm -hmm. minute uh, video trailers. Um, so well, that, that that for sure is something that comes from the advertising world. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, Eric had a question. Yeah, we got a quick question from Eric Ackley. Is the game in multiple languages? Oh boy. <laughs> a lot. Yes. Yes. Oh, yes. It, it is in in in, uh, in eight languages. Yeah. It is in, of course, in English, it is in German, it is in French, it is in Spanish, it is in Chinese, both traditional and, um, and, simplified. Yeah. and simplified, it is in Russian, and uh, and I think that's all. I think that's all. Yeah. So, I'm, I mean, I'm, I'm, sorry, I'm, I'm Portuguese. Yeah. Okay. Portuguese, yeah. So Sorry. following his question, I was wondering, um, do the languages also have any issues being translated to like with the puzzles in there? Like could that influence, you know, the answers, you know, because it's in various languages? Yes, the, um, of course. Um, we had a, like a, um, a hard time doing localization. Uh, also, we were lucky because most of the puzzles, they didn't depend on language. But uh, some of them they did. For example, on uh, chapter uh, uh, five, we have something like uh, uh, that. We, we like this song about the, um, uh, by the Commodores. There is uh, three times a lady. Yeah. Okay. And how do you translate that in Spanish or into Russian? I mean, then uh, I mean, it's, you have to um, to do to change the name of the song. Uh, so you have to translate all the songs on the tape. So um, it kind of uh, makes it uh, also um, difficult. And uh, yeah, we had a hard time, but uh, at the end, um, we, we were also lucky that most of the puzzles, they, they were puzzles that uh, they were universal. I mean, they didn't depend too much on, 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 on the language. Did you have to use a program to do that, or did you have to hire professionals with the translations? No, we hired professionals. Wow. Okay. Yeah, and that was that was the hardest part because they you give them the text, you give them the puzzles, but they don't they do not only have to be translators. They they need to play the game to understand right. the puzzle. So they they translate it. They they they. They translate like the right words to to so so people can understand and solve the puzzle. Wow. Yeah. That is tough. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, oh wait, where do you ask? Yeah. Okay, I know that you've uh, stated that Now Memory is your first game, but it doesn't feel like that at all. From the storyline to the plot twist, the detailed description, the actual app game design with exciting reveals, music, puzzles. This is really well done throughout the game. Uh, how long did it take you to create this whole thing from beginning to end? Uh, Danny had the idea like three years ago, four years ago, and we started to this, yeah. But we really started like uh, two years ago when we did this starter campaign. That was like um, the best option that we, we had, like, we can test if, you know, the people like that game. Yeah. And yeah, it's something two years, like, properly, you know, working Danny, yeah. Yes, but, but as Beta is saying, I think, uh, well, it all depends when, when you when you start counting, okay? I mean, uh, probably it was three years ago when we started talking about it, mm -hmm. but it took us like about seven to eight months to do this Kickstarter campaign and raise some money so we could start. Uh, so, well, it depends on where you put the, I mean, like the, the count, no, like the, the counter. But uh, yeah, probably it's three years since uh, we started talking about it. With money, just two years, yes. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> nice. Um, uh, so, I mean, there's a really vivid scene that constantly pops up in my mind. Like, the way you're able to build a bar scene with the music. I mean, there's different types of instruments and this chitter chatter in the background. and It really sets the tone and it makes us feel like we're actually there. Um, a lot of these sound elements are also very, you know, unique. Are they all developed internally, specifically for the game? Yes, they are. If you take a look at the at our Twitter, we just posted like about a week ago uh, how our sound designer he went to his grandpa's house to find like a 200 years old safe box just just to record like the sound of the wheel turning. Yeah, an opening. 
So he's like a very, very good uh, sound designer and he did it all by, by himself. He also did all the music. I mean, the music that you hear in the bar, all the instruments, the song is, is his. And um, he did a, a very, very good job. Yeah, I mean, you he can definitely play- oh. 347 sounds of it, for a memory. 347. Yeah, the full yeah. stars, the opening curtains, even just the minor things. I yeah. think they're yeah. just in there. That's so. Well, one, one, one thing that you were uh, um, stating at the very beginning is that, um, uh, and, and it's something that we've um, we've learned from all, all the, I mean, uh, that the time uh, our memory has been has been released is that uh, like now there's like a lot of focus and a lot of hype on on VR as an immersive uh, uh, storytelling format. Mm -hmm. But we were thinking that we also have like the feeling of being immersed in a story with a text. I mean, whenever you get a book that catches you and engages you, you get this feeling of being immersed, probably because the written word makes you, I mean, uh, springs your imagination and you, you have to work on your mind how the, the character looks like and how's the environment and, and that makes you somehow feel deep into the story. And so we thought that if we, if to that feeling, we could add control, which is game mechanics and interactivity, but also mm -hmm. sound. We could also get like this uh, immersive feeling, no? like this feeling of, of being immersed and being like inside the story. That's yeah. why um, we, we have like this goal is like by using like old school uh, or uh, very basic tools, okay, yeah. old school tools or basic tools like text, image or sound, if we could just get like this feeling of immersion. And uh, and um, I I don't know you you I don't like to say it but um, you've tried the the, the 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 game you you might tell yourself you had like this feeling of being immersed into the story. Yeah, I mean, like for me, I feel like I was like the writer of the story. That's how I felt mm -hmm. because when you press something on there, when it reveals, it's like you're writing the story or as editing. it's yeah, done. Yeah, like you're editing right. and, and changes that you want to make. And uh, it's like amazing because because yeah. there's certain things in there that you feel like, wait, this can't be what he means. And then it's like, no, this is exactly what he means. And then yeah. I was just like, oh, I can't, you know, because we can't do too many spo spoilers, but mm -hmm. yeah. stuff that you're <laughs> able to, you know, find out in the uh, the way that uh, the programmers were able to, you know, design the uh, text into puzzles and then have you figure out the puzzles while you're doing the interactive, uh, you know, yeah. stuff with your fingers. It's just amazing. Also, like, um, like you, can, you can play the game without headphones on, but, you know, it is recommended and you have it stated in the yeah, beginning of the game. Wear so I played it with my AirPods Pro and I turned on the spatial audio. Wow. Uh, I felt, yeah, I literally felt like I was inside this book. And like I kept looking around when something was happening, and I was like, "Oh wait, yeah, it's in anything. the game!" Like yeah. it's just, it's yeah. just like you're in in the zone. Yeah, nothing it's else matters. Game. Um, so Eric Ackley quickly wants to know: Is the game a mobile desktop switch? He, he's really interested in playing. I, I know it's available on uh, Apple and Apple um, Play. Uh, Google Play, right? Google Play, is yeah. it available anywhere else? Steam. On Steam, okay. On Steam as well, right? Cool. Yeah. All right. We, you put the links in our review as well. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. But we, we we recommend Eric. We recommend the 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 mobile version since there's a lot of um, features that we've 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 designed just to to take the most out of the um, mobile devices. I mean, for example, there's some puzzles where you have to use the gyroscope, okay, feature. And, um, and obviously, like the touch the screen also uh, gives you more than like this this feeling this feeling of being immersed in the story. But also, if uh, the, uh, we've we've also developed it in, in for PC, and it will be soon also on Apple TV and and, and Mac OS. Oh wow! How do you play on Apple TV? No, yeah, we don't know yet. We're <laughs> <laughs> working on it. <laughs> It has to be a touchable TV screen. Yeah. Something. Well, I mean, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, I, I have no idea. Unless you're controlling, yeah. like through a mirror, and then you're doing it on your phone. Like if you're like the zooming or pinching and doing anything, yeah. you can do it from your device and then see it on the TV. Or that's just really. But that's still screen, screen mirroring. Bigger, yeah. like, this is just. <laughs> yeah. Well, we don't know. We also we 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 were also thinking on doing a. Uh, um, uh, a switch port, port. So, but uh, we, we we need to wait how 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 sales go uh, mm -hmm. for these uh, platforms. And if and if uh, if they go well, we, we probably will go for the um, for switch. 
Okay. Maybe PlayStation and Xbox doesn't make that sense because probably they're not. Uh, I mean, consoles are not made to to read, or you don't read on TV. But but Switch is is very is, is pretty close to a, a mobile device. Yeah, I mean, I love how portable it was. Like I could be waiting for the train or the bus, and I'm just playing the game on my phone. And then miss your stop. <laughs> <laughs> and then I'm like, oh wait, oh no, I gotta go back now. Oh, let's play again. <laughs>、um, so I mean, Eric also wants to know if it's better for tablet or phone. What do you think?、Mm, well, I think well, probably tablet. But、okay. phone, but we've made everything so you can play it on both. But, yeah.、Um, I don't know. For example, we've we've got like some reviews from from magazines that that, that、uh, it's been featured as like the best iPad game of 2020. Okay, probably because there are not that those that those many games、uh, that fit the the best the iPad than than the iPhone, for example. Yeah. But、uh, yeah, probably tablet is closer to to the to a book to say to say it so. I mean, I would say like for people who can't like read, you know, with too small contacts and stuff, use a tablet. <laughs> Are you looking at me? People、for? with bad eyesight <laughs> use the tablet. <laughs> yeah.、Uh, okay, so I'm gonna pretend like I know what I'm talking about. I、She's、want to sound、try. like a programmer <laughs> for once. What platform is this game developed on? Did you have to try out a few different platforms? I know we also have a good amount of game creators、uh, out there exploring apps or Unity type of like game. Design、um, would like to know in terms of pros and cons on how you chose your platform. Beton. At the beginning, we didn't know, you know, which platform because we didn't know anything about、uh, paint. But we started to look it up, and then we find out at the, at, at the beginning we wanted to do just for iOS. Okay, like just for iOS.、Yes. But after six months, like reaching, you know, people. We find out that the best was Unity because it's a multi-platform、um, language. So for us, was great that decision because now we can have it in Google, we can have it in iOS, and we can make it in Steam as well with not that much of work. So it's in Unity the language that we that we develop at, at the end. Oh, okay. Yeah. That's. I mean, that's what I assumed because that's the only one. Yeah. All right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and what the revision actually? Yeah. All right, cool.、Um, all right, so this game can be played as a solo, which Brendan and I did,、um, or as a team. I mean, we can sit together and just like read it together、yeah. as well.、Um, we really wanted to enjoy the surround sound feeling, and that's why we played a solo. But、yeah. it really makes a big difference when, like I said, when you're wearing your headphones and playing it like、um, just like out of the speakers of your phone. So because I remember there was a part when a woman was talking really romantically to the character, <laughs> and I was like, oh my god, where is this going? I, I, in my head, I heard. <laughs> I mean, the actress, was, her voice was really sexy, though. I, I have to、mm-hmm. say.、Yeah. So,、um, okay,、uh, I, feel, I feel like I teased you way too much for this. So, too long. And if anyone who's liked to try this game, they're kind of love to. How many?、Away. How many winners are getting, getting? Five, five free five games. Five winners. Oh five my winners. god! Huge chance. Thank you. <laughs> you、yeah. know, cheers to that. But they have to do something.、Uh, what do they have to do? They, oh, have, they to have to type in, in the, the phrase. My memory tells me that I'm the winner. Yeah. <laughs> see how good your memory is if it's true or not. <laughs> All right. Enter for the raffle. Type in. My memory tells me that I'm the winner. Yeah. To the ra-、uh, to the、uh, chat. And if you miss the live stream and watch our post edited version of this on YouTube and IGTV, you can still type in the phrase under the video before episode thirty seven, which airs on February twelfth.、Mm-hmm. Okay. All、What's、right. Oh,、turn? we lost Daniel, but、uh, I guess. It's kind of a bad thing. It's a Wi-Fi.、Um, yeah, the Wi-Fi is. Okay. Wi-Fi. Well, we,、yeah. um, so let's see. What are some of the hurdles that you've encountered when designing this game? Like, normally our guests are tabletop game designers, so we, you know, we're very curious to hear about the challenges faced from the app game developers'、uh, perspective. Like, what are some of the obstacles? Uh, you have to repeat again because I didn't. I didn't understand. Oh, sorry. Just more, more or less. Like, what are some of the challenges that you faced、uh, from like an app game designing、uh, perspective? Wow. Actually, it was to have a balance between the text and the puzzles. Okay.、Mm-hmm. We didn't want to be like we, we wanted to be like fifty and fifty. But we think something. We write it down. We 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 the art designer said we're gonna do this without anything. With the Photoshop and and then when we talk with the developers, they say, "Hey, you cannot do that. That's 
that's good on Photoshop, but <laughs> in the yeah. reality, we're gonna we're gonna make that. So it was a long process because we didn't know how to do that at, at first because we're a rookie. Uh, even though we don't look like we are indie <laughs> developers, we had an indie game and well crafted, I would say, but we are indie. So that I believe that was the the difficult part, like to, to make the balance between puzzles and, and, and the text. Okay. okay, we're going to repeat the same question to Danny. Yeah, he was so uh, Beto was telling us some of the challenges that you faced, uh, you know, when developing this game. Do you have any that you'd like to share? Just some obstacles? Yeah. She said that it was like a 50-50 balance between puzzles and text yeah. in terms of design. But Well, probably that's, that was one was the, uh, of the hardest thing. I mean, because, you, I mean, you have like the, it's like writing a song. I mean, you have like the music and you have like the lyric. And here's like, kind of like the same. It's, Sometimes it was like the story that was like going like first, and then you have to like to adapt the puzzle. But then you got like this puzzle that you love, and yeah. then make something in the story to fit the puzzle. Probably that's one one of the the biggest challenges on. Um, and then on, the developer uh, said that they you cannot do it, Danny, because it's not <laughs> they cannot do that. <laughs> yes, and, and once you have it all designed, then you go to the developers and they tell you, but, but you cannot do this. I mean, it's a, <laughs> this is impossible. I mean, oh, it waits too much or something. But, yeah. but I think, yeah, I think, I think we, the, the main challenge for for us, I think, was like to raise money for this. I mean, mm -hmm. like the financial part, and, and also on, on terms of design, was like to keep the right balance between story and puzzles, because uh, we find that sometimes whenever, and you probably you know you know a lot of uh, you, you're experts about this, but you know that you play a lot of escape rooms, and sometimes like the puzzles, it's well they're just puzzles and they don't they don't have anything to do with the story, and yeah. that somehow is, is uh, 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 probably whenever they, they 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 work together in the same direction, I mean the experience gets much 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 better mm -hmm. and uh, that's one thing that we wanted to to do because we had also like the feelings that also on games graphic adventure for example or escape rooms that you have online i mean they they lack a story so you got the, the puzzles and then you solve the puzzles but where's the story and, mm -hmm. and, and we think also the story is something important um, yeah I'm just wondering, like, because you were talking about uh, something that you presented to the uh, developers and um, stuff that you can't do, because there's a lot of stuff that you did in the app that I've never seen before already. Mm -hmm. What was one of the ideas that you had? And they were like, no, sorry, can't do it. But it was so amazing that, you know, you could share because you, well, could, you didn't might, do it anyway. They might be able <laughs> well, to because... do it for the future. Who knows? <laughs> <laughs> you can't do it, so I don't know. Maybe it can't be well, well, it was there. There were things. Um, uh, most of them were things that uh, uh, that they had to do with uh, how the way you navigate the story, because uh, like using scroll is something that gives a headache to to developers, because you, you never know where the user is. I mean, you know where the screen is, but you don't know where the eyes of the user are. Mm -hmm. Or so we wanted to do things that uh, they tell us, okay, you cannot implement this just because uh, we don't know where the user really is. I mean, we know he's scrolling or she's scrolling, but we don't know exactly what, uh, what that is. Yeah. That, that is, for example, all the things that, they, okay, we want to do this and they, okay, but then the app is going to wait too much and it's going to, no, it's not going to be, it's not going to work on this and this and this device. Um, yeah. It was those sort of things. I think right now everything, everything is doable. Uh, the only thing is, is how many people do you reach? Because not everyone has a phone with a gyroscope feature or with an acceler accelerometer. Mm. So there were ideas. For example, we had this, this, this very, very nice idea. Is each each chapter, not not from from chapter one on, each chapter is dedicated to a memory trigger. I mean, those sort of things that. Uh, um, spring or bring back your memories. Music, smell, taste, uh, uh, time, places. So it, it, uh, each chapter is dedicated. You know? For example, chapter 7 is about places. That's why you go around the house. Chapter 6 is about taste. And that's why every time you take a sip, you remember things, okay? Mm -hmm. Chapter 3, whenever you turn the music on, you see things that you don't see when the music is off, okay? But we had like this thing, which we want because touch is also a, a trigger, a memory trigger. 
Yeah. But we want to do it like this, like whenever you go into screen and you just swipe your finger on the screen and you feel things like velvet or wood. And this was this was like very, very difficult to do if you if you wanted to keep like the scroll because the, the, the somehow the, the system doesn't understand whether you're swiping or you're scrolling. Yeah. And so we, had to take, we, had to, we had to take that to take that feature out. Yeah. Ah, interesting. That's really cool. And now that I think back, because you know everything uh, that you said, I'm like, wait, we just went through five senses. I just didn't. I didn't because I all I took uh, from that was like I was sipping beer. Yeah. <laughs> At one point, it's, it's, it's not exactly senses. It's I mean, well, um, it's everything that triggers memory. Probably, yeah. Sometimes it's the smell, it's taste, but pain. For example, chapter four, which is whenever you go to to, to the tattoo artist, that gives you pain. You know, and that pain brings back memories. That's why whenever you do the tattoo, the words yes. come out. Yeah. Wow. I'm a little worried about the uh, quizzes now. He remembers every chapter. What yeah, I know. Is. We might have to tweak them to make it a little <laughs> harder. <laughs> the questions are not, not challengeable anymore. <laughs> um, I, can, right. I, can, I, can, I can I can fail if you want. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. Well, it depends so, on what you're uh, drinking. Yeah. So. I'll, I'll drink anyway. Uh, so I know you mentioned that you have uh, publishers for this game. What's the reason? Uh, what's the reason to have like to use one versus putting the app in the store yourself? Like, did you have to pitch a specific publisher, or did you actually have a good amount to choose from? No. Not yet. Well, um, well, uh, well. The, the the reason why we look for a publisher is, it is because this was our very first game. So we, it was, I mean, we did a lot. We, we raised the money, we, we, well, we left our careers, we convinced people to join us in this uh, journey and uh, developers, designers, sound designers, uh, translators. So we kind of like, okay, and now we have to marketing this game. This, this is too much for us. And we didn't have any idea. So we thought on, on reaching some, um, some publishers, we went to, we went to, to Indicate in Santa Monica, looking for publishers. We met Anapurna, we met Devolver, we met um, some other people. We, we, then, we, we also went to PAX, uh, East, uh, PAX East in Boston. Mm -hmm. And we also met the, uh, some people there, uh, Raw Fury, uh, well, Second Maze, and um, and this plugin digital. And we we, we showed the game to, to all of them. I have to say that um, this was our like, I mean, the, the, our initial th thought was was we need someone to help. Um, I, we can tell that uh, right now, like the mobile market, it seems that it's not like a very um i don't know let's say profitable market mm. i mean uh probably uh gaming people are going to all the platforms like pc or consoles mm -hmm. probably uh mobile has been left just for more casual games with a free-to-play business model so ours which is a, um, a premium model where you have to pay up front okay not a big uh, a big thing because the same the same game or games like uh, like ours are are being um, priced like much higher on other platforms. Mm -hmm. But uh, still, is 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 something that um, the 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 let's say like the, the the market is not is not very receptive to. So mm -hmm. we 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 just focus on this, and there are not so many publishers that they want to publish your game only on mobile. That's mm -hmm. why we found this publisher. It's a French publisher, Plugin Digital, and they told us that uh, we should do a PC version also. Okay, because mm -hmm. uh, the, um, for example, gaming press, they 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 somehow uh, write about you and give you reviews if you have a PC version. If you are they only have a mobile game, they kind of like say, well, it's not a. Uh, uh, well, it's a game, but it's, uh, those I don't know like this Candy Crush style games, which you don't have to a lot to review on. I mean, it's hyper casual. It's just uh, they don't they don't somehow they don't pay too much attention to to mobile games if you don't have like a PC version. Yeah. So that's why we decided to go with a with a uh, publisher that uh, they, they 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 know how how these things go. 
Right. Yeah. And I'm just curious because I saw it in the ending credits that you gave thanks to uh, uh, Rusty Lake, which a lot of um, fans uh, are playing that those game types of games. But do you um, do they actually help you guys with any of the developments of the game? The, well, totally. We're friends with them. Uh, we met them at PAX, Bos PAX East Boston, and um, and uh, well, we had like a crush. Okay. <laughs> you were also fans. <laughs> they, we had a crush with them. They we also look for the chance to be published by them. They have like uh, they're they're um, they're starting a, 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 a publishing company called Second Maze. Mm -hmm. and where they they plan to, to publish other games but unfortunately we were like not on the on the same wavelength they were like starting and they, we were at the just with with the game ready so they told us that if we could wait for them to to be the publishers we told them that we we were in a hurry when it was just over, i mean we were already three years working on this and we need mm -hmm. to uh, make money but we're friends with them and uh hopefully in the future, um, in so the future we can we can collaborate game. i have to say for example that the legendary chunkster which is uh, a fan of ours is the the one the, the the guy behind our discord community he is a very big fan of rusty lake and he also uh learned about in memory because someone posted on 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 uh, the Rust Lake Twitter about a memory, so. Oh wow! Cool. Yeah. <laughs> it's always good to find out, like where. So from. speaking of on memory, like there's a lot of the design elements that we've never seen in other games uh, that we played before. Of course, this is a heavy narrative game, and like I wasn't sure how invested I was going to be with the, the amount of reading, uh, because you know I'm shy when it comes to reading. I'm like, uh, it's too much reading. <laughs> But surprisingly, I was very excited and intrigued the whole time. Um, I love how you're able to make the game so interactive, even with the text. And there were so many puzzle elements that went with the storyline. And we can't say too much because we don't want to give any spoilers to anybody. Um, but did you develop the concepts of the puzzles first and then write the story? Or was it vice versa? Mm -hmm. no, uh, no, the first was the story. First was the story. First was the story, and then we tried to find the puzzles that could fit better the story. But of course, we find puzzles, or we found puzzles, or we, I don't know, puzzles we we got on our on our, on our minds that were so good that we had to tweak a little bit the story to 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 make them fit in. Oh, okay. I think that makes sense because the storyline needs to be there so that you could also figure out what you could do with the text in terms yeah. of interactions. Yeah. And there are certain things like, you know, the action words like open, close and that, that you're easily able to do with the app. But um, yeah. Right. So that's 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 what and, I think. And, what, and what you're saying, Brandon, is, is totally something that um, that is has been happening to us for 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 I mean from the very beginning, when we've been to these trade shows like this or this expos, except to, to exhibit and to showcase our game. The thing was that uh, we were there and we had like I don't know other games on on the left and other games on the on, on, on our right, and people would make you to, to try them. I mean, they would never just I mean they would come, they would see text. Well, <laughs> I'm, I'm not I'm not into this, and they they would they, they would never come at first. And they would start like doing like a line on both sides, right and left, to other games. And I guess they, they uh, some of them got tired and said, "Okay, maybe while I'm doing like this line, maybe I can try <laughs> this text thing." Yeah. Uh, and so they, so they, so they tried it. And uh, and as you were saying, once they try it, they they like it so much that they would go and tell their their friends. Yeah. So at the end of the day, it was it was like kind of like funny. It's like we had like the longest queue. I mean, the longest line was ours. I mean, it was like people telling others. But I we assume and it is true that uh, maybe text is not like the a, a, like a very appealing layout for a game. Yeah, but it's what you did with the text that yeah. makes it so creative. And yeah. not only that, like you have like one paragraph and then you have like I'm not giving away too much because this is in your trailer. But you have one paragraph and then you have the phone. Yeah, mm -hmm. and then it's like okay, so now as an escape room, you know, fan, we're thinking like, all right, what's the phone number? What, what who do I need to call? What are the digits? How do mm -hmm. I, you know, what am I pressing? And then you scroll down a little bit, and then things are just unraveling. It it's just like 
the so the, flow is very nice. Yeah, the breakage control is great because you don't have like an enormous uh, whole page text. It's mm -hmm. like, oh, I have a little paragraph, then I have an interactive thing, then I have another little paragraph, then I have another interactive thing. So it's not really tiring to read through the entire like storyline because it's not really an uh, entire chapter full of text. Right. Mm -hmm. So that's I think that's the, another reason why it doesn't it's not considered like a fully text like type mm -hmm. game. Yeah. Um. So this is probably the uh, the most amount of Easter eggs we've ever seen, we've ever seen in the game. I can 100% say that I've missed out a lot. Even <laughs> like every time I went back, I feel like I found another one, and I think there's more. <laughs> yeah. So can I just ask, how many have you hidden in the game, and how does the player know if he's actually completed the entire egg collection? Well, uh, I uh, honestly, I cannot tell you the number, but it's more than 20 Easter eggs. Um, um, it's like, I can't even find my own Easter eggs anymore. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot where I am. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, well, a uh, niche chapter, no? Yeah, well, it depends. Uh, on, 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 on in the very beginning, we 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 put a lot of a lot of Easter eggs on each chapter, and I guess at the end, uh, no, we no, were, no, like, no, like you know, I have yeah. to. Yeah. Meta was Meta was saying, "Hey, we need to we need to finish. We need to finish. No more Easter eggs, okay?" Yeah, like, Thank you. That's what that's what Beto comes. He's like, "No, no more yeah. Easter eggs. Just no more Easter eggs. Easter eggs. <laughs> no more wow. Easter, no more video. No more, you know." Well, you you <laughs> you, 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 guys, you guys that you've played, you know that well. There's some uh, Easter eggs. Uh, the way to know that you have found all of them is because you have you have a progress bar on each chapter. Whenever the progress bar the progress bar is full. That means that you found all your lost memories. Oh. Okay. On the menu, the, the... In, on the menu. Whenever you go yeah. to the menu, you go to the chapter section. So the yeah. white bar next. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the best bars are full. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> if they're full, as you found, you found everything. Ooh. And also, and also, you know, there's an uh, there's not an alternative ending, but more of an epilog. If you find an email somewhere hidden, that you can write it. But I'm not saying anything else. I didn't know already. You don't know where it is. I'm not else? up to there yet. But. Okay. <laughs> um, so, I mean, like, I'm going to take uh, advantage of off air later by asking more questions. But I'm very curious about one of the uh, Easter eggs we found. Uh, there was a a mysterious location that's kind of hinted that there could be a mysterious box. Is that true or not? Yeah, well, yeah, that is true. I mean, that, that, um, if you if you put that on Google Maps, you will find the right spot where our cave is, where our where our studio is placed. Oh, is that's placed. so cool! Yeah, and we have a box there forever for anyone that wants to come and open the last debaser. It's it's there. It's in Barcelona. You're invited to come, so whenever you come, you don't have to tell us twice. Like oh. we're going there anyway. So. All right. Yeah, so at least that's, we there's one last box that we we keep there for anyone who who finds it and wants to come and open the the last debaser. Cool. Oh, that's so cool. That's so interactive. Yeah. <laughs> um, so our last question is: Now that you've released this first amazing game, uh, what do you have for us in development for a second game? Because I'm sure you know by now that the bar has been set <laughs> and the expectations mm -hmm. are going to be higher. Mm -hmm. um, is there anything that you're able to announce for our audience here today uh, on what the next project could or might be? I sort of saw on your social media that you have two coming. <laughs> yeah, two coming. Yeah. We have a sequel for our memory that okay. we're working on it, and um, another one which is uh, not like a memory, but um, I believe that is what we have learned, <laughs> what the people want. It's the also our, our audience because they, if you go to Apple Store, they say, "Please, we need, we, we want another game like this. This is a really nice game. We don't. It's hard to find a game like this." So we are making that sequel, and yeah, we're trying to make that sequel. We are writing that sequel, and we're trying to finance that sequel. And the third one, it will be great as well. Also, an app game. The third one. Well, probably the, the, the yeah. Uh, not only app, but we 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 have understood that uh, uh, we need to make it um, also for uh, multi-platform. I mean, consoles and. Uh, and, uh, and, and PC from the very beginning. So it would also be uh, a narrative game, 
not 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 a text based, but uh, it will be more of a image based. I think it's it's based on it's based on uh, on uh, the golden age of detectives. Okay, it is. Um, I don't know if you've heard about uh, locked room mystery. Yeah. Well, yeah. I think so. I mean, it's not the same as escape room. It's a locked room mystery. Someone has been found dead on a room which is sealed. It's closed. Yeah. I mean, windows are closed. How did, how did the killer get in? Yeah, or yeah. go or got out? Or, yeah. <laughs> so, but uh, but uh, we we're very fans of, of those locked room mysteries. They were very popular in the 1920s and 1930s. And um, there's a uh, there's some uh, feature uh, featuring uh, Sherlock Holmes, of course. Mm -hmm. uh, Agatha Christie did uh, um, uh, some of them. Ellery Queen. But um, uh, and we we have we have a story and, and but it's a, it's another storytelling format. It doesn't have anything to do with a, with a memory. For for a memory, we're doing like this sequel because people are requesting it. Mm -hmm. Okay, they they're saying that uh, where can we find more games like this? Mm -hmm. And that's very for us. It's a it's an honor. It's very I don't know. Um, it touches our feelings. It touches our hearts that people are um, are requesting a, a sequel because that means that uh, well, they did they did like or they did, they did enjoy our memory enough yeah. to to request a sequel. Yeah. Wondering how the sequel is going to go because I, okay, yeah. I can't even reveal the ending because even... I was like, what? How is it going to be? Yeah, we, we don't we can't <laughs> give away anything yeah. leading to. Okay. Uh, so, my... all right, guys. This and now. Uh, we're gonna we're gonna quiz our guests. Yeah. Uh, we're gonna play our game. The name of our our second game, the the sequel of a memory, because you know it's a. Uh, we we already have the name. The name. The, na yeah. the, the name of the sequel will be your house. Your house. He's coming to your house, oh, guys. No. <laughs> <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> Thank you for sharing that with us. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so we're about to play our game, which is called. Think or drink. Take a drink. Yeah. All right, Danny and Beto, what do you have to drink over there in front of you? Wine. What have you been drinking this whole time? Oh, yeah, she's like, I have a sip of wine. <laughs> you have been drinking all the time. Oh, yeah, that's, Royal yeah. Brockla. Ooh. Wow, that looks pretty. Is that a whiskey? That is whiskey. Yes. Scotch. Yeah. Oh, that looks good. From, from Holland. Oh, from Holland. And what, what kind of wine are you drinking, Beto? Uh, it looks like a red. Uh, from Ribera del Duero. It's called Pago de los Capellanes. I can write it down for you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right, so I'm popping the top on this uh, bottle that I've been holding on for a long time, but because you actually are our first uh, guests that are from the app world, and we we love the app games, and we, we're so happy to have you on our show. So we wanted to uh, open this bottle with you, which is Il Limoncello di Sorrento from <laughs> in Campania, Italy. We actually picked this up when we were in Campania. And um, yeah, we wanted it to open for a special occasion. Yeah. Yeah, oh, thank you. The way that we play is we ask our guests questions about their game. Um, if they get it right, then I will be taking a small swig of this um and if they get it wrong they will be but taking what percentage is that in terms of alcohol like why is this small uh, who swig? cares no, why do you have a small <laughs> swig uh, not, i think the small oh 32 percent okay. alcohol yeah, so we are a small <laughs> swig in it then i'll be like this in 10 minutes okay yeah, exactly <laughs> it's gonna be and, nap time and also because i feel like danny knows all the answers so why were you even <laughs> well no i'm oh, tweaking oh, the last oh, bonus oh, question i'll let beto answer then <laughs> okay. Well, no, you both have to answer or come to you an know, agreement I don't on an know. answer. I'm very detailed in my questions, so we'll see. All right. So our first uh, question. Oh, let me get the clock ready. Yeah. Um. And uh, it's going to be five questions plus a bonus one. Our first question is: In chapter one, how many birds were there in the painting before it changed to something else? That first picture. How many birds were in it? I have to say that. Many birds. Or you both can agree on an answer. Or you can say different answers. Three. Two. <laughs> okay. Do you want to choose an answer since they're both separate? No, they can each answer one. We have changed that picture so many times. That's why. <laughs> <laughs> one of you are drinking. One of you is, is drinking, and one of you is not. <laughs> okay. So because that person got it right. So, uh, Danny, you're taking a, a drink of that because the answer is two. Oh! <laughs> Cheers! He's gonna go back. Good. Another bird in there. <laughs> Just 
to be like oh Bethel's drinking for sport okay we love you didn't have to drink but all right maybe it's okay. it's like no i need to <laughs> oh this is delicious yeah this brings right. me back to italy so I'm so ready. next question next question for you is what is deborah's birthday wait hold on i didn't oh sorry <laughs> but i have to say the question for us anyway what is deborah's birthday deborah's birthday is um january the 14th <laughs> any any Beto, guesses? Do you have the same answer or do you want to venture another guess? Same answer. <laughs> um, pretty off, but pretty uh, off. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> April twenty second, nineteen ninety seven. And then it freaking is my birthday. That's why. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's uh, April twenty second. January 13 is my birthday. Oh, okay. Wow. <laughs> for the for the sake of quiz questions next time, you use your birthdays for the. For the <laughs> um. Yes, uh, right. The viewers can answer. You are helping them. You're on their team. Oh yeah. Our audience yeah. is if on you their know team. Their, if you know the answer, go ahead. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and uh, yes, they did sound confident, but look what happened. <laughs> 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 All right, so our next question for you is how much is the dinoscope? Dinoscope. Ah, that tells yeah, me. That, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's um, 199. Ooh. Beto, do you want to answer? It's very close what he said. Oh my goodness. Price is right. Give the number. <laughs> 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 How this? You don't have to give us the right answer. Whoever's closer to the answer doesn't have to. <laughs> he said one ninety nine. Oh, five hundred. Five hundred. <laughs> and she went all the way to five hundred. Beto, you're drinking. Yeah. It's one ninety four ninety four. You're good. Unless you want to take a drink, um, you're good. That's actually good. <laughs> That's it for those things. Yeah, from back yeah. then. Yeah. 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 All right. So um, our question number. Oh, sorry. That was question okay. number three. Question number four Chapter is. Chapter three. What's the drink they had at the Pipa Club? Pipa Club. Pipa Club. Oh, we know that. It is uh, uh, mm, one nine zero six Barcelona Special. Yeah. 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 Oh, and that great. is a beer. Yeah. Is that like yeah. a significant beer Cheers. that you have memories of? Yes, it is a very, very good beer. I think they, they, they've given like the, 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 the best beer in the world award last year. Really? Yeah. Wow. It, 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 is, it, is, yeah. it is made in, in Galicia, in Galicia. Uh, in North Spain, and uh, they, they, I think you can find it in the States, uh, in, in some in some places. It's it's of course in the UK, it's also in Germany. But they given like a, a very, they, they, it's been awarded because it's wow. very very good. Wow! Yeah. I get to go look for it. Yeah, I mean, I don't think I can afford it. No, <laughs> oh, really? no it's not. It's not. It's, it's not that expensive. Not that expensive. Not. Okay, I just you it's know, it sounds here. very limited. It sounds really pretty. <laughs> it's good. Okay, so in the same chapter. What's the founding father of the club's name? Adam Keeves' last name. He knows. He did the wink. Yeah, he's like, I got this. <laughs> he's he's right right Beto, Beto, go. <laughs> and, um, uh. <laughs> <laughs> he's right now. He's like, are, are you a part of this? <laughs> Journey, <laughs> but but Danny seems really confident, yeah, so he, he can no, back. I, you. I remember the Adam? No, Danny. <laughs> there, there's there's two Adams, but I think you're you're, you're referring to Adam Horowitz. Yeah. Yes. yes. All right. But I said Adam, eh? I didn't know. <laughs> that. I already revealed Adam in the question. <laughs> I said, "What's Adam Keith's last?" He name? saved you. Yeah. <laughs> okay. All right. So you, I'm know, gonna you know who you know who Adam Adam Horowitz is? No. No, you don't. No, we don't. It's know it's AD Rock. It's one of the Beastie Boys. I was one of the Beastie Boys. You would have probably knew. I don't know. My '80s music, not really. Yeah. Beastie Boys. Um, <laughs> it's new, not new, <laughs> new, uh, new uh, knowledge for me. Um, keep um, piling yeah. <laughs> the, 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 one, one thing that we we haven't talked about, but the, the game is full of references to 
80s and 90s uh, things. I mean, you see like the Walkman, you see like the mint disc. But for example, in chapter three, the founding members of the People Club, they, they look like all people, I mean, all, uh, yeah. all men. Yeah. But the name of them is the three Beastie Boys. Oh, I got a... Interesting. All the smokers, yeah. Is it oh, Mike, no. Mike D? Or Mike, is yeah. one of the Beastie Boys? More yeah, references. okay, now I'm, all right. Uh-huh. All Easter right, so eggs. we have a bonus question for you. I'm going to tweak it a little bit. You, the answer is going to be a number, but I want you to multiply that number by three. Yeah. Okay. Here's the question. How many dogs did Jay buy for extra security? Can you? Nine. I mean, three times three, nine, I would say. Bingo. Any guesses? Is he correct or do you want to give another answer? ¿Cuántos guardias tenía? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> that was part of the story. <laughs> uh, he is close. Um, yeah. Look at me finding all these details yeah. in the stories that <laughs> actually could be challenging. Yeah. I mean, he's, all right. He's in the same mold. So are you going to guess or should I reveal the answer? Give a number. Give us a number. And then we'll multiply that by three. <laughs> oh my goodness. I no. Four to say something? So you're saying 12. that it's 12. Uh, the answer is 18, which means there were six. Six oh. However, thank you so much. We're going to drink together because it was awesome <laughs> playing with you. <laughs> Give it up for them. Yeah, that was really great. It's not drinking, eh? Nothing? You got the, all the answers, right? <laughs> oh, uh, yeah. I mean, like, you are you were still drinking a bit. No, he got some answers correct. Yeah, he no, he right. got the beer question right. He yeah. was close. You got the bird thing right. The bird one was right. Yeah, no. <laughs> <laughs> well, those, 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 those questions were difficult, I have to say. <laughs> I never make them easy. <laughs> That's the yeah, she, she'll ease you in and then, you know. <laughs> <laughs> it's real. All right, so for anyone who came late to the show, if you want to give this fun game a try, type in My Memory Tells Me I'm the Winner into the that chat the now or anywhere below in the post-edited version of the interview. Mm -hmm. And remember, only our post-edited version of the live stream will have our embedded letter number in the video. It's just one each in each it's, episode. Yeah, um, yeah. Uh, there, so I'm, I'm assuming most of you are finding those letters and I, I'm glad I was able to make it a little bit easier and hopefully you you are putting together the that question. That 20 letter or number phrase, and then you can email us the solution and then to the raffle mm -hmm. uh, to win Epic Escapes three games in one box. Um, and that will be announced on episode 50. Episode 50. So, We're almost um, there. Yeah. <laughs> our next Fridays um, on February 5th will be our um, episode with Modern Treasure Hunt from the Netherlands on yes, the show. Yes, with Jachi. Mm -hmm. We'll be chatting about our game, their game, the VOC Treasure, and their newest game, Mysteries of Alchemy. Yeah. And we're probably going to do a quick unboxing video as well of the collector's edition of the game. So you'll get to look at what that looks like. Mm -hmm. And uh, so stay tuned for that. And thank you, Danny and Vito, for joining us today. Thank you for joining us all the way from Barcelona. Uh, mm -hmm. Thank you. Yes, and thanks, audience, for tuning in. And make sure to give us a like and subscribe to our YouTube channel if you like our show. Yeah. And then we'll see you next Friday at 4 p.m. Eastern Time. Bye, Bye. everybody. Bye. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, let's go. Locked in, 60 minutes to escape. escape. Think before you move, there's no room for mistakes. No. If you got what it takes, stop watching, listen. Cause the clock is ticking and the plot is sticking. No matter what.